Hi everyone, how are you? I um, hope that if you are anywhere near me where it's apparently a wind chill of minus 10 or something like that, or anywhere where it's extra cold the past couple days that you're braving the uh, crazy temperatures, I am eternally grateful that I work from home and don't have to leave the house if I don't want to because I certainly have not gone out and braved the, uh, the crazy temperatures. So I got a request earlier today to do a DVD show and tell and I had told the person who requested it that it was probably going to end up being more being a, a funny video just because of the fact that I don't exactly have the most up-to-date DVDs. I am way more of a music person than I am a movie person. I have a couple of favorite movies that I've watched over the years, but I don't really go to the movies very often. Um, I can't even remember the last movie I saw in the movie theater, honestly. So, I went through my family's DVD cabinet and took out some movies to do a show and tell. And some of them are from I don't even know when, and some of them are not even opened because they were probably just like a bad gift or something. So, um, I hope that if you enjoy show and tell type videos that you still enjoy this one. And maybe you can laugh with me at the ridiculousness of my DVD collection. So, I will say that I did get a DVD over the holidays, which I had mentioned in my Christmas gift video, and that is Jingle All The Way. And I got it because I was complaining I couldn't find it on TV um, during like the 25 days of Christmas on ABC Family or whatever channel it is, and so I got it as a joke. Like I can watch it whenever I want. Um, so if you, I'll, I guess I'll, I'll read some of the descriptions on the back so you can like know what they're about if you don't know what they're about. But I don't have anything miraculous that people probably have never heard of. Like it, it's all pretty old. Um, but it's about, it says it's Christmas Eve. Eve and Howard is determined to get his son the year's most popular toy, the Turbo Man action figure. But everywhere he goes, it's sold out. Soon, Howard finds himself in a crazed battle against time, clouds, and a maniacal postman who's as determined as Howard to find Turbo Man. Also starring Phil Hartman, Rita Wilson, and James Belushi. I miss Phil Hartman. He was funny, right? He was awesome. So, yay for cheesy Christmas movies. The, se the second one I have is called The Great Outdoors. And it has um, John Candy and Dan Aykroyd. And if you can't tell, it hasn't even been opened yet because it's probably god awful. Um, and who knows? It must have been a gift or something because I don't think any of us would have just gone out and bought it. But if 
you are a John Candy and or Dan Aykroyd fan and you want to know about this movie, it says, Vacation bound family man Chet wants to relax and spend some quality time with his family. But when his obnoxious brother-in-law Roman shows up unannounced and uninvited with his family in tow, the result is anything but restful. It's a vacationer's worst nightmare when each of Chet's plans for rest and relaxation is ruined by his oblivious in-law and when Roman's clan outstays its welcome and pushes Chet to the limit of his patience, the war is on to see who is best equipped to enjoy the great outdoors. Allegedly, John Candy and Dan Aykroyd are at the top of their game in this uproarious comedy from the mind of John Hughes. So... Who knows if this will ever be opened. It'll probably be sold at a yard sale for 50 cents. Oh, another Christmas movie. A Year Without a Santa Claus. I am a big fan of this movie. watch as many Christmas movies this year as I usually do. Uh, I was really sick, so I just I wasn't really up to it, I guess. This one is really random, and it's not a movie. I guess it's a movie. I'm not really sure. Um, it's a Bare Naked Ladies DVD. Um, so now you can really tell how dated my DVD collection is because they're not even really like a full band anymore. Um. remember the last time I watched this either. Apparently it is all of their great videos in one amazing DVD collection from 1992 to 2001. And I used to be in love with them. I saw them in Atlantic City a couple times. And um, but once they're lead singer got like busted for coke or whatever and left the band. I stopped listening to them because he was basically the only reason why I loved them. I just listen to his solo stuff now. So that's kind of a deep Join Detective Frank Drebin and Captain Ed Hawken as they solve the toughest cases full of all of the sight gags, puns, and non secateurs that men that made the series famous. So I guess it is all six it is all six episodes and behind the scenes features like interviews and stuff like that. They have a big donut on the back. It was definitely a Christmas present probably for my dad and he just like, either forgot that we owned it or never opened it or whatever, but it's still all wrapped up. Napoleon Dynamite, which I didn't even know we owned until I started 
looking for this video. Um, you've probably seen this or at least heard about it, but I'll read the back anyway. Napoleon Dynamite is a new kind of hero, complete with a tight fro, sweet moon boots, and skills that can't be topped. Napoleon spends his days drawing mythical beasts, duking it out with his brother Kip, and avoiding his scheming Uncle Rico. When two new friends enter Napoleon's life, shy Deb and mustachioed Pedro, the trio launches a campaign to elect Pedro for class president and make the student body's wildest dreams come true. But if Pedro is to beat the stuck-up summer, Napoleon will have to unleash his secret weapon. And I know that I've seen this movie. Like, I remember seeing it, but I, I don't remember, like, a whole bunch of details about it or anything. I just remember it was when it came out about how much of like a huge craze it was and all of the catchphrases and people doing impersonations of him and stuff like that. And we have Young Frankenstein, which is a Mel Brooks movie and I love Mel Brooks movies. I know that not everyone is really into the kind of humor um, that Mel Brooks has and that there's different types of humor and different sort of like genres that people are really into and not into but uh, my dad was always a big Mel Brooks fan so I grew up watching like Men in Tights and um, Blazing Saddles and History of the World and stuff like that. So, um, Young Frankenstein is not my favorite Mel Brooks movie. I love Robin Hood Men in Tights and I love um, Dave Chappelle in that movie and I could just watch it forever. But um, it's still a Mel Brooks movie and I still think it's pretty funny. And the back says, Mel Brooks's monstrously crazy tribute to Mary Shelley's classic pokes hilarious fun at just about every Frankenstein movie ever made. Summoned by a will to his late grandfather's castle in Transylvania, young Frankenstein, Dr. Frankenstein, soon discovers the scientist's step-by-step -step manual explaining how to bring a corpse to life. Assisted by the hunched back Igor and the curvaceous Inga, he creates a monster who only wants to be loved. Cloris Leachman, Madeline Kahn, Kenneth Mars, and Jean Hackman co-star in this inspired vision of lunacy. This particular one is still not opened yet, but I've definitely seen it quite a few times, so it must have been like it's another like Christmas gift or something. This is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> and yeah, this it, it, are you I can't believe it if you're still watching right now. This is like the most whack collection of DVDs that a person could ever have. It's just like Jingle All the Way, Ninja Turtles, some random John Candy movie from like 1907. But you know what? We're gonna have some fun. So Ninja Turtles. I love the Ninja Turtles. I grew up watching Ninja Turtles and Ghostbusters and I love them. And, um, this one is one of the older ones, I believe, um, not that you, you, I'm sure you've heard of the Ninja Turtles before, but it says, now you can catch America's favorite green teens in their first live-action blockbuster film after waiting in a puddle of 
radioactive waste, these radical reptiles are transformed into New York City's greatest crime 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 fighting quartet, featuring a soundtrack with MC Hammer. This film will captivate adults and kids alike with its blend of humor, camaraderie, and martial arts action. Don't miss this blockbuster movie. You'll have one shell of a good time. I'm traumatized right now. Well, all I know is they've remade some. Like they've had like newer Ninja Turtle movies, but this one is the one that I like. This is like the original, the original MC Hammer soundtrack edition. So no mess with the best. Now, like I said before, there are many different types of humor out there and many different types of um, movies made with different types of humor. And I know that humor is really subject to personal opinion and one movie that someone could think, could think is absolutely hilarious, someone else thinks is really stupid, um, which is probably what's going to happen here. This is, um, by most accounts, a terrible movie, but it is actually quite possibly my favorite movie, like, ever, like, my favorite, if you, if you said to me, what's your favorite movie, I would say this, and so I apologize to everyone that I'm offending with my poor taste in movies, but the movie is Hot Shots, and it is, depending on your opinion, if you're asking me, I think it's hilarious, this character, Admiral Benson, who is played by Lloyd Bridges, is probably my favorite character in any movie. He's just so, like, witty with one-liners, and it's just, I love it. This movie makes me laugh. I could watch it every day and never get sick of it. I have watched it a million times. And, ironically, a lot of the people who were in this movie together, um, ended up, like, acting with each other later in life, like Charlie Sheen, um, and John Cryer is in this movie, and, um, Ryan Stiles from Whose Line Is It Anyway, it's kind of like one of the earlier things that they did, and they all ended up going on and, like, knowing each other later in life, so, if you've never seen Hot Shots and you have any interest in knowing what it's about, <laughs> um, Charlie Sheen, Lloyd Bridges, Carrie Ells, Valeria Galino, and John Cryer, co-star and director Jim Abrahams, who made um, Airplane and Naked Gun, Jim Abrahams' truly hilarious spoof of Top Gun, recruited to join a top-secret mission for the Air Force, a renegade pilot, Charlie Sheen, finds himself coping with an incompetent admiral and a carefully selected squadron of flyers who are either inept or half-blind. He also winds up in competition with the Corps' model of military perfection for the heart of the base's sultry psychiatrist. And I don't know if that sounds funny to you or not, but it's... I mean... They did make a second one. They made a sequel. For whatever reason, I don't know. Like, maybe when this originally came out, which I can't see a year on it. I'm sure it's somewhere on here. Maybe when it originally came out, it was, like, really popular. But they made a second one, and it was really bad. Like, if you think this one was bad, which I'm sure a lot of people do, the second one would be, like, you just, like, you'll never get that time back.
this is a semi-normal movie. Spider-Man. Uh, actually, something that was in the theaters that was made in the past decade. Um, I don't think I need to tell you what Spider-Man is about. This is, I think, the first one. And there's a whole bunch of, like, extra features. Like, um, the making of Spider-Man and commentary by some of the actors, different subtitles, um, an outtake reel, which is probably pretty funny, like a blooper reel. But, yeah. I don't think this one needs an explanation. is another one that is kind of a, like a classic if you're my family apparently slap shot and it says this irreverent and hilarious look into the world of professional sports has Paul Newman as the coach of the Chiefs a struggling minor league hockey team to build up attendance at their games, management signs up the Hansen brothers, three hard-charging players whose job is to demolish the opposition. Slapshot's outrageous comedy, hard-hitting action, memorable lines, and unforgettable characters have made this classic one of the all-time best sports movies ever. And I happen to be in general a really big hockey fan like I just love hockey and somehow I am third in my fantasy hockey league this season I don't know how um, but I'm really excited about that so if you like comedy and you like hockey you're gonna like a funny movie about hockey and this one actually is kind of like a classic you know like with Paul, Newman, Paul Newman and everything um, I've always enjoyed this movie. There are a lot of like one-liners and memorable lines and stuff, so there you go. Um, I don't even know if I want to talk about this right now. So, I have The Godfather, which going to say right off the bat before I do any, say anything else I abs I know that this is a classic I know that it is an amazing movie I know that it is a movie that everyone should probably see because it's a classic and I'm going to say I've never seen it before which is I'm 27 so I guess it's probably kind of weird that I haven't seen it I don't really know if I have an interest in seeing it or not, which I apologize for if you're like, oh my god, you have to see it. Um, but I, I don't know if I really wanted to see it, I would have saw it by now. I'm really, really into like really like campy, funny, um, humor, comedy movies. I hate horror movies and horror movies hate me. Like, I get really scared really easily, and I already have a hard enough time sleeping, so I don't really, like, find it interesting to freak myself out on purpose. So, I don't really know. I know that it's probably, like, really bloody and, like, murderous and stuff like that in The Godfather. So, maybe someday, but, um... I don't even know if I need to read the back of it, but I'm sure everyone else but me has probably seen it. But this is a restored edition, so they, like, did the new digital sound and, like, widescreen edition. That's why it's, like, all gold-plated and stuff. Um, I have two more. This one's really dusty. Um, this is The Punisher, which 
is The Punisher walks through the world we all know A world darkened by war, crime, cruelty, and injustice He has no superpowers to battle the evil he sees Only his fierce intelligence His years of combat experience And above all, his iron determination To avenge those wronged by society's villains and I, even though, like I said, I really don't like, like, violent movies and stuff, I have seen this movie only because, like, my, my dad was watching it or it was on TV or something. And I just was, like, there when it was on. And some of the parts are really awful. Like, when the guy's face gets burned and, like, when the guy, like, drags him at the end, like, in the car. That's, I don't enjoy watching that stuff in movies. But anyway, I did see this one, at least. And the last one that I have, which is also really dusty, is um, really old and a personal favorite of mine as well. Um, and that is the movie Antitrust. And I have always, always enjoyed this movie. Uh, I don't remember when I first saw it, but um, it's probably another one of those movies where some people were like, oh, it was so bad. And I'm like, oh, it's like my third favorite movie ever. Uh, but it is, um, I'll write, read what it's about in case you're either like, either never saw it or you don't remember it. Um, it's, when is it? 2000? The year 2000? Anyway. In a world where unseen enemies can watch your every move, who can you trust? Ryan Philippi, or Philippe, or whatever you call him, Rachel Lee Cook, Claire Forlani, and Oscar nominee Tim Robbins star in this fast-paced, sizzling thriller that crackles with a genuine intrigue considerable suspense, and an ingenious, stunningly cinematic payoff. You have to see to believe. Young, brilliant computer whiz Milo Hoffman lands an exciting and lucrative job at the world's largest computer company, Nerve. Hand-picked by powerful CEO Gary Winston to work on a project that will change the way the world communicates. Milo thinks he's found his dream job, but when his best friend Teddy is brutally murdered and clues lead to Nerve's involvement, Milo becomes obsessed with uncovering the truth. With his cunning and beautiful girlfriend and a sexy programmer to help him, Milo races to beat Teddy's murderers at their own cyber game. But as they close in on him, he realizes he may be too late to learn the most important code of all. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. And know which are which before you're killed. So, I don't think I've ever read a DVD that basically just gave the entire movie away like that one. <laughs> but, um, I really like it. I, it is suspenseful. It's not scary. It's just suspenseful and interesting and it kept my attention which is really hard for movies to do and uh that guy right there oh, <laughs> there it's really good. i mean i like it i don't know what that means don't don't take any of my words for it i all my favorite movies are from like 1988 The only other things that I have, which I just happened to find in the DVD cabinet and actually have been looking for forever, is, um, this is the Best of R.E.M. And, um, I don't know, uh, I am maybe the only 27-year-old girl who still listens to R.E.M. on a regular basis. They 
um, they're actually my favorite band. I do like music of the now. Like, I'm not, like, obsessed with, like, all old stuff. I do listen to the radio, and I do like some new music, and a lot of new music, actually. But, um, ever since I was, like, three years old, I've been listening to R.E.M., and there was just something about them that are really special to me. And maybe their, their sound, their message, or a combination of them. I did get to see them live one time, which was great, because they have very recently, um, not like broken up, like they didn't fight or whatever, but they decided not to be a band anymore. And that was really sad for me. Um, their first concert ever was actually on my birthday, um, like in 1986. So anyway... Uh, so I have their best of video that has a lot of their songs on it. And then I found an old R.E.M. album that has this. two REM box sets, like old box sets, that I got, um, I got these when one of our local, um, music shops was closing, they were going out of business, probably because everyone was stealing the music online, but, um, they were really cheap because they were going out of business, so what they are is, like, remastered songs from R.E.M. as well as um, the original demos that they recorded in Athens, Georgia back when they first started which was really interesting to me because um, some of the songs like you can you can see how they sounded before they ended up the way that they were and some of them were just like pretty much the same song just a little rougher and some of them were almost like completely different songs. Like, you wonder why they went back and changed different words or changed different music. And they ended up the way that they did and they ended up being amazing songs. But it's really interesting to hear how they started out. And like the evolution of kind of where a, st a song starts and where it ends up. But most importantly, well, no, not most importantly, but sort of importantly, is they make really nice tapping sounds. So I'm going to tap on this for a little bit, and that'll probably be it. stop there because I think I've rambled on long enough about awful DVDs and REM which probably all of you were like oh my god this girl is so weird um but sorry <laughs> like I said the DVDs aren't really like they aren't mine like I mean they I 
got them from like my family's DVD cabinet and half of them aren't even open so we mostly watch like the movies on Comcast and um or like I have Amazon Prime so I watch like instant videos on Amazon Prime and other people in my family have Netflix on their computers so we kind of like we just don't really buy DVDs anymore. They just get given to us as gifts, weird gifts that just sit in a cabinet for apparently 15 years. So anyway, um, I hope that any of this was enjoyable and I really wanted to fulfill the request even though I knew I had bizarre DVDs. Um, feel free to continue requesting stuff because I will do always do my best to um, fulfill the requests and I like requests because then I know that I'm giving you guys what you want to see and I do have a, a jewelry store roleplay that I recorded the other day that I'm just holding on to in case I don't get to record videos in the meantime um, that way I have it but um, other than that guys are doing well and uh, thanks for watching.